Mississippi Outdoors host Janet Parker found out that boats to Ship Island are not the only craft setting sail. The charter boat business on the coast is surprisingly lively right now, and they invite everyone to come on down. The water's fine. Fishing has always been a way of life on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Combined with good old southern hospitality and generations of experienced boat captains, you're guaranteed to have a good time. Although Katrina didn't wreck the charter boat business, her effects on the rest of the coast have given them plenty to worry about. Uh, the charter boats are ready to run, but one, we need the marinas back. It's going to take time for that. Hotel rooms are few and far between that are affordable. Uh, I, I say that, I'm not slamming them, but uh, they are kind of expensive. And the to on top of a charter boat trip, then it becomes very expensive. The biggest difficulty right now, I think, is the hotel rooms and stuff, you know. Um, it's getting somewhere to stay, getting people to let them know where we're at, and getting them to us, you know. Like I said, with the bridges out both in Bay St. Louis and the Biloxi Bridge, it's difficult for the people. If they stay over in Ocean Springs, they got to drive almost 14 and a half miles around just to come down here to Point Cadet for the charter boats. And I know it's, it's difficult for them to get their clients and customers in here. The people scared to come down here right now because they think it's really devastated to the point there's nothing here at all, which it is devastated, but we can go back and go fishing. With the Point Cadet right here, we do have 85% of our boats housed here with no electricity and no water. Uh, we have one pier that's been severely damaged, but other than that, just this harbor sustained the storm really well. Small craft harbor's completely gone. I have, I have nothing left there but just the pilings. We have to completely remove those pilings and start from scratch. The fact of getting a slip here in the marina is one of the things we were most concerned about after the storm because all the marinas were so tore up and we do have a place to go to and that's, at least we have a place to operate out of and that means a whole bunch, it means probably everything. Just, they, they just got to get some of these marinas rebuilt. Uh, there's boats scattered everywhere and uh, nobody's got anywhere to tie up. You're lucky right now to have a slip in the marina. <laughs> we're surviving, we're surviving why you don't spend all the money you make all the time, number one. Living off your savings, dipping into your savings, and, and I'm, probably a lot of them is doing the same. The ones that, that don't have any savings, they're going to have a rough time, and they, I don't think they're going to be around because they're not going to survive this year unless something really happens. At the end of the month, a day to you doesn't mean anything. A day to me could be 1000 to $2,000. The Maritime and Seafood Industry Museum was completely destroyed. The schooners were the only aspect of the museum to survive. Like most of the charter boats, they were safely stored upriver during the storm. Though they did suffer minimal damage, they are struggling to do their part in bringing life back into the sound. If, if it wouldn't have been for the income that we received from our schooners, October, November, and December, we did a lot of walk-on sales, and that's for individuals. A lot of them wanted to go sightseeing and see Highway 90 and see the destruction from the water side. You could not drive on Highway 90 during that period. So what we're basically missing, and it's going to hurt us uh, somewhat this summer, is our convention groups here at the casinos. I mean, the few casinos that are open, they're using their convention space for their casinos now since they've been able to come on shore. Um, so there's not any convention space on the coast right now. Uh, we're probably, I would think, going to be probably about 75, about 25 percent off from what we did last year when we end up this year, I would imagine. And I'm hoping it's going to stay that good with our locals uh, booking the schooners. The customers we're getting now are we, what we call new tourists. They're the workers. Uh, I've had uh, a plant from uh, Natchez that is building a biofuels down here twice. I've had a local roofer three times. These are the people we have, we're having now, our brand new people, that the workers here that are wanting to go out fishing. Fishing is one of the elements of our tourism product that's in good shape and that people can take advantage of right now while we're busy building back uh, some things like our cultural product and our casino uh, hotel uh, retail product. We see that the fish population is doing great. Um, inshore waters, people are catching a lot of fish. Uh, they're coming back to the docks with a lot of fish. Um, anglers are, uh, are, are having a good time now. Um, and the more, the closer it gets to summer, the better it's gonna be. So we're just getting better and better. 
we are here, we can take them fishing, and it's as good as it's ever been. What was that? It, it's a good business, I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's something I hope to, um, I have a five-year-old that, that I look forward to being able to bring him in the future, you know, and uh, he enjoys fishing and, you know, I was raised, my daddy's raised me fishing all my life. So uh, it's, uh, it's in our blood and we're going to keep doing it. The biggest thing I would like to see is get the message out to the people and we will deal with the rest of it. We, we will handle the rest of it. We're here. We're ready. Let's do it. For Beyond Katrina, I'm Janet Parker.